Hey everyone, it's Noah here, and as you probably noticed by both the number in the box and our title of the video, uh, we have reached 300 subscribers, and that is insane. Like, when I started this channel, I hoped for the best, obviously, but I didn't think it would ever get this big. Now, I know 300 in the grand scheme of things is, like, immense, but for what started as a small independent channel, like... I don't want to say myself, because it's so much more than me now, but you get the point. Um, so I thought, I've alluded to it in the past on the Discord and in, I think, uh, Game of Life, if anyone remembers that cover. I know I had the background imagery based off of, well, my life, and I said that maybe one day I'd explain it, and I thought, this is a milestone, and let's not explain my life. Let's not just give you a biography. So instead, to celebrate this milestone of Bright Torch Productions, I will be talking about how it came to be, what inspired me to start it, how it got to where it is now, and some other interesting things along the way. So with that, Let's jump into that with a first chapter that I'm sure surprises absolutely no one. So, to give absolutely full context, I'm going to backtrack to about six or seven years ago. Don't worry, I'm not going to cover that entire time span, but there are a couple events back then I want to touch on. So, started... Um, as I said about seven years ago, where, for whatever reason, and this is a time of my life I'm not too proud of, I'll admit, but something changed for me at least, and my, for lack of a better word, behavior became much more erratic, and I began seeing psychologists, psychiatrists, and we tried to work it out. Um, and that period's over now, I'm fine, but for a couple years there, it wasn't good on my end. I didn't enjoy it either. But anyways, what's relevant here is that, um, I got s sent to a different school for students with behavioral issues such as myself. And at this school, I, of course, didn't have any friends, like adults, I just got here. Um, and there was one kid who I made friends with, uh, who I'll leave anonymous for the sake of this video. But just know he was a good friend of mine. And while I was at this school, I got a message from another friend of mine, uh, back from my original school, and it said, hey, have you heard of this new game called Undertale? Because you should play it, it's a great game. And I thought, okay, I'll check it out. Went on Steam, a couple dollars, so I got, I got Undertale. And I loved it. It's a great game, if you haven't played it already, do. I know that like it's probably been like nothing but a meme for like the past two years, but eh, it gets to live on somehow, I guess. Um, but anyways, played Undertale. I told my friend about it. My friend loves Undertale. So now, Undertale is like the one thing that me and my friend, we really have in common. We really bond over and share the experiences of. And because we are cringy children back in that era, both of us were members of the Undertale fandom. Uh, now we were not part of, like, the insane fandom that you always hear about, we were in the fandom. And... I liked music. I loved the music of Undertale. Uh, so I looked for all sorts of musical fan works, all sorts of lyrical covers. The gist. Uh, my friend, he didn't care much about that, but there was one... Two, technically. Uh, but the other one is irrelevant, and if you're in the fandom, I'm sure you know what it is anyways. Um, but, anyways, the one musical track other than that 
that we both enjoyed, that we both got to experience and bond over, was a little track by the name of Pyrus Makes a Mixtape. Now this track in and of itself is messy enough, it's fine. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, I guess I really do have to thank the maker of this track. Uh, so I guess this is where it all started. So, I liked it, but I thought it was too short. Like, it's only like a minute. This would be one of them. So I went looking. And eventually, I found a track which I lovingly refer to as Pyrus Makes a Mixtape Extended Edition. Of course, its actual name was Undertale the Musical Phone Council. So I showed my friend, and he was meh on it. Like, he wasn't crazy about it, but I liked it. Uh, actually, at the time, I remember thinking, boy, this papyrus kind of sounds, like, too goofy and silly, and now I can't imagine, like, any other voice for him, so... The musicals ruined me in that regards, apparently. But, anyways. So, I would watch it fairly often. I would pull it up on YouTube. And one day I noticed that in the recommendations, there was another track by the same people, also labeled Undertale Musical. And it was at that point I realized, oh, this is a full thing. Because I'm a silly person who does not read descriptions. So, this was my epiphany that this was like a major project people were partaking in. So, I subscribed to them. And, so sure enough, every week on the dot, every Sunday, a new track for this musical would come out. And if that sounds familiar to you, well, I don't blame you. Um, but anyways. So, I saw every upload as it came out, uh, and I loved them all. Couple of exceptions. We don't talk about uh, Pathetic House. Um, but anyways, so, time goes on, and they take a hiatus. They need to uh, revolutionize and tidy up what they're doing before they continue. I remember going in to Halloween and thinking, it's gotta be your best nightmare. They can't do anything else but your best nightmare for Halloween. And then, no, they did some uh, comedy, Dungeons and Douchebags, it was called. Which, that's grown in, well, no, it's a different thing altogether, but regardless, and getting off track here. Point is, I followed them, I really liked their stuff, and they were on hiatus for about a year. And when they came back, stuff they made was even better than before. The hiatus was worse, in my opinion, because they put out great stuff afterwards. Uh, and at this point, I went back to my old school. I left the new school, left my Undertale friend behind, she knew me, and I had the entirety of Undertale the Musical on my iPod. Every, everywhere I went because I loved it. It was great. <sighs> okay. So I think that's enough about Man on the Internet. For now, they're definitely going to come back later. But for now. Oh, wait, no. One more thing before I go. After Undertale's musical wrapped up, they began work on Chrono Trigger the musical. Um, and... One of my favorite songs from Chrono Musical, because I only followed them there for like the first 10 songs or so. Admittedly, I haven't been as invested in Chrono Trigger as I was Undertale, but I, I listened to like the first few songs they put out. Of those first few songs, I really liked Isla's theme. Isla's? Ayla. Isla. Isla. I, I, I think it's Isla. Anyways, Isla's theme. Um, I thought I like this vocalist. Good vocalist, good song. Yeah. And then, admittedly, my interest in music waned away. I was no longer as concerned with Undertale or music as a whole. I was moving on to other things. Namely, the tabletop role-playing industry, as every nerd seems to do at some point in their life. 
So, I got into Dungeons and Dragons. Later on, I got into more systems that started as just D&D. And I even started the tabletop role-playing club at my high school uh, when I was there. But, got into D&D. And I played it, I ran it, I have DM'd many more games than I've played in, send help. Uh, I don't want to say send help, obviously. But, as time went on, I realized that just like Undertale, there was a D&D fan. Admittedly, in a different sense. Um, but there were fan works for D&D. And I began to go through the exact same pattern that I went through with Undertale. And of course, the first thing I went looking for was D&D music. And I know, that's ridiculous. Who makes songs based on D&D? And I'll tell you who. One person, in fact. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are more. One person stands out. A vocalist by the name, well, not by name, they go by. A vocalist who goes by the name of Cammy Cat. Now, Cammy Cat here put out a number of songs. Ma of the King, uh, the, Asse the Assembly Song. Those were her two big ones for a while. And what came later, at the time, those were the two big ones. And I'm listening to these songs, and I'm like, yeah, these are good songs. This sounds familiar. Where have I heard this person before? And I clicked. Cammy here was the person who had voiced Isla, or Ayla, or Ayella, however you want to pronounce that name. The person from that one song from Chrono Trigger that I liked. That song. Um, and I realized that this industry, this community of people online, these vocalists, these music producers, there's so much overlap, they're so intertwined. It's not a bunch of individuals, it really is a community. Uh, because man on the internet, I had always taken it for granted, but I, at that point I had that epiphany that everyone in that group, that immense group, does their own thing as well, and it's just as good. And it, it made me think, and I thought, you know, I'd like to be in that sort of community. I want to make music. I want to help people as these people have helped me. And it stayed as that for a while, because I never found the motivation to do anything. Nothing ever seemed to line up. Um, but then, something came to me. In a very, very odd way that'll make absolutely no sense at first. But we'll get to it. So, a little more than a year ago, late June, I had a dream. And you might be thinking, oh, it's a dream about, you know... Music. Wrong. It was a dream in which the anime character Okuto Uraka was impaled by Perry the Platypus, who had been thrown at her at terminal velocity. Yup. Um, so I woke up, and I thought, that was a very random dream. Um, and I had a friend who also knew these media. So I messaged that friend, and I said, hey, I had this really weird dream. Isn't it funny? And they said, yeah, that's funny. And then they said four words that set me on this entire trajectory. The simple words of, I want to see that. That's five words. I'm an idiot. Okay, they said five words that sent me on this trajectory. Anyways, I'm doing this unscripted if you can't tell. Um, but anyways, I've said anyway like five times in the last ten seconds. Moving on, aha. The next night. Nope, I never... I drew it. I opened MS Paint, 
and I drew the dream. It's a very shitty drawing. I'll pull it up. It's awful. It was meant to intentionally be awful. I made it like as bad as possible. I'll pull it up now. Okay, that's nothing to look for you. Down it goes. Um, the next night, I had another dream. A much more mundane one, mind you, but still interesting enough. I was sitting in my front room of my house, and there was another person also in my front room, and the two of us were just sat. And the other person in the room was Cammy Cat. I had no clue what they looked like at the time, so don't ask me how I visualized them, because I genuinely do not remember. Point being, I, I had an awareness that this was Cammy. And I woke up and I thought, well that was a st stupid dream. But whatever. So I messaged my friend again for no reason other than the fact I told them about the dream last night. If I hadn't had that platypus dream, I wouldn't have told anyone about this uh, living room dream. And me telling people about the living room dream is essential. So once again, I make a shitty MS Paint drawing of that dream, because it's the tradition at this point. It's probably shittier than the first one. I won't even bother pulling this one up, because I... It's shitty. You don't want to see it. Um... If I change my mind in editing, I'll put it here. I'm gesturing. You can't see me. I don't have a camera, so I'm not sure why I'm pointing at you. This chapter has just been me rambling for so long now, haven't it? Anyways. So... We're chatting, me and my friend, and I think, you know, I, I'm thinking back to when I was in the phase where I was like, I want to do this, I want to make music. Maybe this dream is like a sign. It wasn't. It wasn't a sign at all. But I was still like semi-conscious. It's like four in the morning, and I'm like, it's a sign. But no, I thought, no, I need more to go off of. And then more came. Because... Right around this time, another YouTuber uploaded. Like, literally, the same time I was thinking, no, I need something more. I got a couple of cases by a YouTuber named Anapansu, who's another vocalist. And this upload they did was a collaboration with Kamikat on a track from The Greatest Showman called The Other Side. Now, the other side is all about getting someone and encouraging them. Well, it's, it's not as noble as I make it sound if you have it in context. But out of context, um, it's about encouraging someone to follow into the industry and form and join the big league. And I said, okay, you know what? So that's as much as a sign as I'm going to get. Let's do this. So I went, and I got a drawing tablet, got a, well, I didn't get a microphone yet, actually. But I got a drawing tablet, I started out as an artist, believe it or not. I sucked, so I moved on from that. My original covers were recorded with a gaming headset microphone while standing in my front room, or my family room. Point is, they're bad. But, I was making very slow progress, and I thought, I'm alone here. And then I found a video. You see, back when I was interested in the community as a whole, I found one track called Never Ending Party. And Never Ending Party was an absolutely massive collaboration between like 30 different vocalists. And I loved it. It's the idea of all these people coming together. It was great. And it was at this point where I found a track just getting out, just gotten uploaded in late October of this year called Never Ending Party Second Generation. So I was obviously intrigued, so I gave it a listen. And what it was, was a bunch of up and coming vocalists who had banded together and redone 
never-ending party themselves as a sort of passing of the torch almost. And I thought, whoa, that's so cool. I love that. I think that about a lot of things. So I'd have to comment. I'd have to comment saying, this is so cool. I love what you're doing. It's really inspiring. As someone trying to get started, I think you've done a great job. Uh, and the creator of the video and like four other people in it actually responded to me. And the creator of the video, the guy who organized it, said, I'm really glad it inspired you. Um, you said you're trying to become vocalist yourself. Um, tell you what, give me your Discord and we can chat on Discord. Okay, I think. So we chat on Discord. He's a great guy. Uh, his name is Nova MC. Pull up his channel here. Go subscribe to him. Great guy. Um, so we're chatting, and he uh, says that if I ever need advice or if I ask any questions, I can come to him. So, sure enough, on and off again, I'd go to him, ask questions, get recommendations, advice. I can do that. It was a great time. Uh, he even added me to a community Discord server of other creators like him, so I'm. I was pretty happy with that. I don't use it too often, but I am technically there. But, anyways. So now, I had a foundation, I had someone I could go to, and I thought, you know, at this point, the improvement needs to come from me. So let's get some upgrades. Now, I got a microphone. A uh, blue Yeti, which I know is controversial in the community, but it's worked for me so far. Uh, although I do want to upgrade at some point. But anyways. I began making much higher quality covers. Still not great, but better than a headset microphone. And during this period, something clicked with me. Because if you've been with the channel for a long time, or if you've ever scrolled down to the bottom of our history, you know that one of the first videos we put out was, well, I put out, it was still with me at that time, was Train Rush with lyrics. And then somewhat later, The Big Parade with lyrics. Both being tracks from Hat in Time. And for the longest time, those two videos were by far our best performing releases. Like, far and away. And we got a number of comments on them. I keep saying we, it's still just me at this point. Um, I got a number of comments on them uh, saying, do you intend to make a full musical? And I never really gave a definitive answer, but as time went on, I realized, you know, what I'm doing now, it's, it's not really helping anyone. I set out to help people but my audience is so small, and I'm appealing to such a niche crowd, and also, I'm just, at that point, a bad vocalist. I still think that I'm not that great, but whatever. I, I'm more of a writer-director than I am vocalist nowadays, anyways. But point is, I thought, you know what? Yeah. Let's make a musical for Hat in Time. So... Obviously, I need a cast. But where do I find a cast? Well, remember Man on the Internet? Of course you do, it's a big part of this video. Man on the Internet had a spin off channel called Internet Remix, and two of them coexisted. And it was as I'm pondering where I could find a cast that I see. A Twitter post from another member of the Men on the Internet community who is now in the cast, uh, Piper. So thank Piper for this. Um, mentioning the Men on the Internet Discord server. So I joined. I joined this server. I asked them for a link. They sent it. I hopped on. And I socialized. I started my works. And when the time came, I put out a casting call on the Discords, on Reddit, on the 
Twitter, although my Twitter account is very small, so that didn't do much. But eventually, I did get a cast, and it's the cast you know today. Uh, originally, we didn't have an artist. There was no plan to get an artist, but then someone DM'd me on Discord, and I forget their name, but they haven't talked to me since, but they told me that if I needed an artist, go to Amino. And I thought Amino. I've always heard that place getting plugged, but I've also always heard like really bad things about it. But I'll check it out. Hop on to Amino. Sure enough, within like two hours of saying we're looking for an artist, we get someone hopping on. I think, great. We have a team now. So, with a team fully assembled, we began making videos. In addition to the regular covers I made. But then I realized how the YouTube algorithm works and realized that my bad covers were in fact preventing the musical from really taking off. So I canceled them. I stopped making covers altogether. I used to make gameplay videos way back when. That's been long gone. Um, cause, mostly because half the time I forgot to unmute my mic. <laughs> they were bad videos. But anyways, so now I have a mic. A proper equipment setup. I still need like foam. Like it's, it's an echo. I keep having to edit. I keep having to edit it out and mixing. But I shouldn't be telling. It makes me sound like an amateur. If I am an amateur. But anyways, keep saying anyways. Dang it. With the team assembled and my personal uploads cancelled, I realized that at this point the channel was no longer me because. I wasn't in that many videos, and I didn't have my individual uploads, so it wouldn't make sense to keep the channel named Noah Green, would it? So I thought, all right, what can I name it? So originally, thinking of Man on the Internet and that never-ending party, I thought, what if we called ourselves Past Twitch Productions? And the Twitch have been passed to us. And then I realized, no, that's stupid. Because A, we're still a really small channel, and B, man on the internet's doing fine. They're not passing the torch to anyone yet. Okay, what about Bright Torch Productions? That works. That'll be your name, Bright Torch Productions. And that's where we are now. Uh, we at Bright Torch Productions continue to put out uploads. Um, we continue to grow. We're incredibly thankful to you, the viewer. Um, I know this video is like not what you usually expect. You made it this far. Thank you. I know this is a long video. It's probably getting to like the half hour mark by now, but yeah, I know you'd rather be watching something else. But if you have gotten to this point, I really do appreciate it. So thank you, everyone. I, I'm grateful. Not just for this, but for everything. So I, I should wrap it up before I didn't have our mark. And yeah. That's about it. That's how Bright Twitch Productions went from a emotionally troubled child screaming about Undertale on a play yard to someone making city MS paint drawings about Perry the Platypus impaling anime characters to this and it's insane to me how fast things have changed like that dream as i said my the first upload i made stardust speedway was at the time of recording less than a year ago and i'm willing to bet at the time of the upload as well the fact that i've gone through so much growth in a year just thank you thank you to everyone who hears this You've done more for me than you could know. And I am just glad to be able to help people and inspire people. I've been rambling for too long now. So, goodbye. Uh, I'll see you either on the Discord or on the next upload. See you, everyone.